battery spot welders. Most of them run off small batteries, car batteries, you can get them to run off LiPo, you can get them to run off uh, high power transformers, chargers, and they all do a bit of a job, but they don't do a very good job. So after spending quite a bit of money, um, I mean this is not all of them that we have, we've blown more of them, so there's no point showing them. And again you have your capacitor batteries that are charged from a, again lithium ion and they'll charge up the capacitors and you'll get a shot and then you have to wait for it to charge again. So we decided to try something different. And just push these to one side. And we've got the good old microwave transformer. Now I've already done cut out the top winding, cleared it out, and using a 10 square cable, I've put it in four times, in around four times, and I just need to join it up now. Now you can't spend money and go buy all these different types of connectors and God knows what, but uh, we have all this from the other ones and we'll adapt them and we'll make just a simple spot welder. This is a 220 transformer and it has, it still has the spade connectors on it. So what we need to do is we need to run that from a 220 to 30 volt. And the easiest way to do that then is with a power lead. Now you have your normal power lead like you would power up a radio or whatever. So we just snip that off and, and voila. A couple of little connectors on that and you're ready to power it up. But not quite yet. What we need to do then is we need to put these leads on here. So make sure you're not connected to anything before you do this. And we'll go ahead and we'll get them ready. So what you do then is you strip it. With the cable stripped or the insulation stripped from the cable. Just gives them a bit of a bend. And using the cables that came with one of the other kits, just push it in with a washer. And we'll put the washer on the other side. The washer helps to make good contact and avoid it, the cable spreading too much. And with a little screwdriver and just tighten that down. And if you want to make sure it's good and tight, then is this is a it's an eight mil. Now it's not a fantastic job, but it should be good enough. Now you may have noticed that I did them a different length. And the reason for that is they won't touch each other. That's the plan. Uh, and now we do the other one. With both of them done, we now connect it. 
and we'll try it out. So it doesn't really matter what side you put the connectors on. Now as a safety feature I do have a little clip here so that if it does do anything it's not supposed to it'll actually strip it off and everything should be good. I've also got a little pen cap on this so that if they were accidentally to touch um, when they're not in use then there might be a problem. Now what you can do as well if you want is you can put a little bit of insulating tape around there or if you have some heat shrink. Uh, insulating tape should do the job particularly if you're going to swap it around for something else at a later date instead of having to cut all the heat shrink off. So what we do is we put some insulating tape on it. Black on black. Red on red. Now we'll plug it in and we'll give it a quick test. I'll move this back so you'll see a bit more. And I will zoom in when we're doing it. You can also hear a little bit of a buzz. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just test it on a piece of wood. Or at least use the wood as an insulator. So fold two pieces together. And we'll zoom. Let's get it centered. We'll take the cap off. And what we do then is you just touch it. Yeah, there was quite a spark off it. But let's have a quick look. Now it has definitely worked. When we try to separate it, it is quite difficult. And it might be that I, you could probably do another winding and it'll decrease it. Um, what we do then is we just try an actual, a more powerful piece or a thicker piece of gauge. Right, so this is heavier gauge. I'm going to try that now. Just a quick tap. And you can see it's good. Now I'm going to try a battery. So here we have a battery and we're just going to give it a quick tap and see how it works. Have a look at that. That is hard. Again, you can hold it a little bit longer and it'll get hotter again if you want. I'll just try it again.
can see that is good. Now, this microwave transformer cost me nothing. Now the cables, fair enough, they came with the other welders and the connectors came with that. The lead, that was off an old radio or something and uh, that's really, that's really the, all there is to it. The microwave transformer was just an old transformer from a microwave that was going to be recycled. And it's now proven that the it will do a better job than some of these like fancy gadgets. But of course you can buy a very good uh, battery spot welder, but you're talking about to uh, serious money. And if you're just a DIYer, why go to the expense of buying something on a professional level when you're only going to be using it on a, a hobby, as a hobby. So again, there's no fancy gadgets connected to this. What you see is exactly what you get. There's no switches, there's no nothing. You just need to be, time your tap and then you can get, you can get a weld that you're comfortable with and you're happy with. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up, drop a comment, like, share, subscribe and you'll find us on the usual social media platforms.